Good evening, church. We uh, are back again live uh, this Sunday evening for our, since we can't meet um, for our service. Um, I know many of you have been locked in at home these last couple of days, probably a week now, and uh, you're wondering what's going to happen. And today I want to talk to you very specifically about holding on to peace. Um, recently I was reading about David and how he uh, was in a calamity uh, where people, uh, his army had gone to help the Philistines and when they came back his people, uh, they had come and uh, the Amalekites had come and taken his uh, family away, his wives away and his children and they had taken their position and killed some of his men and they had gone off. And David was in a really bad situation because in fact the Bible says his own people turned on him and they were trying to stone him because they blamed him as the leader for what was happening around. And David had nobody, he was pretty much all alone and I know some of you today are probably feeling very much alone um, who are locked in your homes and you have no one around you. Uh, some of you feel surrounded like David, overwhelmed by the uh, circumstances. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. I mean, that is amazing. Um, and therefore, I want to encourage you also today to uh, encourage ourselves in the Lord, you know, to make sure that um, we turn to God at this time and encourage ourselves in the Lord and one of the things that we can do is hold on to our peace see peace and joy are also connected they're very closely connected and you see that as we go through this study uh, you will see that peace and joy go together if you lose your peace you're going to lose your joy uh, and, and the enemy the devil the Bible says that uh, the devil comes to kill steal and destroy and one of the things he comes to kill, steal and destroy is your peace and your joy. He's coming to take that away. And he brings tribulations and hardship and, and things like what is happening right now to take that joy and peace away from you. Jesus was speaking about the parable of the sow and the seed. And that's, a, that's an amazing parable. It explains many things in that parable about how the sower sowed the seed. And they were on different soil. On one soil, the Bible says that the birds of the air came and plucked out the word and, and Jesus later goes to explain that the birds of the air uh, were actually how uh, the, the enemy comes immediately as you hear the word and takes it out of your heart. He talked about the, the hard ground, the stony ground and how the, the roots did not go deep and when the, the, the sun and uh, beat down on it, the, the plants withered away and he said this is the, the tribulation and uh, persecution. Then he talked about the, the thorny ground. So there are different kinds of ground, but I want to very specifically read Matthew 13, verse 20 to 21. It says, But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. You see, he gets, he's full of joy as he hears the word because the word begins to stir up a peace and joy in your heart. And yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. And why is that? Because he says, tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So you see, the devil comes to steal that peace and, and joy from your heart. And when he steals the peace and joy, you begin to stumble. You begin to make bad decisions. You begin to do things that are, that are not right. In fact, uh, one of the keys to, to walking in obedience to the word of God is holding on to your peace. Uh, example of that we find when Moses uh, and the children of Israel uh, left Egypt uh, they w w walked around in the wilderness and they came to the, Red, uh, to the Red Sea they came to the edges of the sea and as they were camped at the edges of the sea uh, wondering which direction to take all of a sudden they see the, the dust clouds in the distance and they realize that Pharaoh had not given up he was coming after them he was chasing behind them with his horses and chariots and Pharaoh had only one thing in mind, he was so angry because of what had happened in Egypt and the plagues and all that. Uh, he had only one thing in mind, he was going to destroy these uh, 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 Israelites or take them back into slavery. So this is where, uh, this was what was going to happen to them. And Moses and the Israelites were trapped between the sea 
and, and the devil basically I mean the devil and the deep blue sea they were trapped right in between them the rock in a hard place whatever you'd like to call it they were in a very very difficult place either way they were going to they were going to suffer loss if they were to jump into the sea uh, they are going to drown because there were children and women and old people and, and young people and and men and all kinds of people, the animals and goods, and they were weighed down with stuff. And not all of them obviously knew how to swim. They were slaves, remember, they didn't probably learn swimming. So if they were to move into the sea, after a while they were going to, they were going to drown. So they, that was one choice. And they had a second choice of waiting there until the army caught up to them and slaughtered them or took them back into slavery. So he was not in a good place. So what do you do in a situation like this? And Moses began to, uh, uh, I mean the people began to panic and began to start scolding Moses. They began to say, why did you bring us out here? Weren't there any graves in, in Egypt? And then God speaks to Moses and, and Moses speaks to the people. And, and Exodus 14 verse 13 to 14 it says, And Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. And the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You shall hold your peace. Moses is saying, don't panic into making a bad decision. I know people are probably pressurizing him to do something. Do something quickly. We are running out of stocks. We are running out of this. And, and probably this is what's happening in some of your hearts. You're panicking. You know, we are running out of stocks. How long is this going? The curfew is not being lifted. We are going for it. How am I going to survive? And you're, and you're probably panicking at this point. And, and if Moses was there, um, he would probably say the same thing to you. Hold on to your peace. And Moses is not there today, obviously. So um, I hear the word of God, which says, hold on to your peace. Don't let go of your peace. The devil is trying to knock off that peace. And if he knocks that peace off your heart, you're going to start panicking. And, and that's not good for you. You're going to lose your joy. And remember, Nehemiah told the people, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You will become spiritually weak if you lose your peace and your joy. And you will begin to, to go down into grumbling and murmuring and, and fear and anxiety and all the negative things that can, can draw you down. Um, and, and let me tell you something. It was not easy for Moses. He didn't... Moses didn't just lift up the rod and bang, the seas parted in one swoosh. That's not what happened. In fact, if you read the Bible carefully, you will find out that Moses was standing by the sea with his hands raised and the, with the rod in his hand the whole night. It says in Exodus 14 verse 21, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So all night he was holding this, and the wind was blowing, and it probably in the beginning he didn't see any signs of the sea party, and he would have, even he would have been wondering, God, what's happening? And the, the armies are closing in, the people are grumbling, and, and nothing seems to be happening. And Moses himself would have had a, a, a kind of fear or panic coming into his heart, but the Bible he held on to his peace as he had commanded the people, hold on to your peace. He held on to his peace. He stood his ground and held on to his peace and said, the enemy are not taking this peace away from me. And as he waited on God and waited on God and waited on God, the seas began to pass. Well, the way to overcome being led by fear, because a lot of people are being led by fear. Remember, fear can lead us as much as the Holy Spirit can lead us and as much as peace can lead us. You know, uh, we talk about being led by peace. You know, we have the peace to lead, lead you. But fear also can lead you. And I think fear is one of the biggest motivators that motivates people into doing things. Okay? Uh, so fear is a very, very um, powerful force to lead us. And if you don't hold on to your peace, you're going to be led by fear. Uh, the way to be led by the Holy Spirit once again, is not and not by the flesh, is by holding on to your peace. And the enemy tries to pressure us and knock that peace out of your heart. Romans 14, 17 says, So the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, yeah, so that's good for you, Pastor, because eating and drinking, uh, the, uh, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, and probably that's one of the big things on your, on your mind. And I agree, yes, it is, but the context of this is different. This eating and drinking he's talking about is the dietary laws uh, that, that people were putting upon the, uh, on, on the, the new converts, the new uh, Christian uh, Gentile converts, the, the Judaizers would come to them and say, you know what, you've got to eat only these meats now that you've come to the Lord, you can't do this, you can't do that, and they were putting laws and regulations and, and bringing in the law. And, and, and uh, Paul says, listen, that's not what the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking and the food laws. The kingdom of God is more than that, and the kingdom of God is about peace and joy. And once again, what we see in this verse is peace and joy going hand in hand. So if you lose your peace and joy, uh, you're going to start doing some uh, dangerous things. You're going to start making some wrong decisions. Uh, for example, if your bills are not being paid and the deadlines are closing in, it's very easy to think, you know what, forget it, I'm going to take a loan. I can't be waiting on God to come through for me. I'm going to take a loan. I'm going to do something that is silly that uh, can get me out of this trouble. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, several years ago, it was about the school fees, the children's school fees. And, and I, we found that we didn't have money to pay the children's school fees. And then they came and said the deadline is in a week's time. But meanwhile, Nirosha and I had been gifted uh, money to go for a conference in, in Singapore. So we had bought the tickets already and when the school fees uh, letter came saying you haven't paid the school fees and if you don't pay this, by the end of the week the children can't sit for the exams and they, won't be, uh, for the exams and they can't come to school. And I began to panic because I realized how am I going to do this and I felt even bad as a father. How could I be going off? for a conference in Singapore um, while my children don't have school fees. By the way, I didn't spend our money to go on the conference. It was gifted to me. So I was, but yeah, you know what? I was thinking, what would people think? What would they think? They'll think what are irresponsible parents they are. They are going off abroad while their children don't have um, money to go to school. And I was really panicking and the de deadline was coming because we were due to fly that Monday. Friday was the a deadline for the school fees and if I flew off to Singapore I was leaving the children without anything so what I did was I had a, a, a gold chain um, which I took to the jewelers I uh, pawned it and I but at the, uh, the the afternoon I went to pick up my children from school and I picked them up and when they bring the car with me um, they began to um, to um, asked me what happened there, what happened and I, I began to explain to them and as I explained to them what happened um, they turned to me and said no, that's not God, that's not the way. I got upset and I said well it, it doesn't matter to you, I paid the money so forget it. But what happened was I went abroad and, and someone, God had brought someone who paid the entire year's school fees for them that Thursday. My, my point is this, sometimes because of fear we make decisions and those decisions are wrong decisions because we are not hearing from God because we don't have peace and we are not holding on to the peace. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and sound mind. Now the, the, the translation of this, um, another translation of this puts it like this. Uh, the God's Word translation puts it this way, God didn't give us a cowardly spirit, but a spirit of power, love and good judgment. Power, love and good judgment. God didn't give us fear to lead us, but He gave us a spirit of love and power and good judgment, the Holy Spirit power and good judgment to make decisions. Uh, many people make decisions out of bad judgment and because of fear. And I, as I kept saying, Isaiah 55, 12 says, for you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? It says, you know what? We are going to, you're going to go out in joy. You're going to be led by peace. Peace, peace at this time. Don't give in to fear. Plant your feet on the ground and, and stand, stand and hold on to your peace. 
Isaiah 55 verse 12 says, For you shall go out with joy and be led with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Uh, peace can lead us. Uh, and God, God often leads us through peace. Now I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of a break because as you can hear uh, the sound outside is getting a bit loud so let's wait till he passes by um, uh, he was supposed to come at 6 o'clock but for some reason he turned up now so let's, let, let's wait a bit till he goes because let's not lose our peace over this Okay, we are back again. I'm sorry for the disturbance, but that's what happens when you broadcast from home. And uh, as you come into the New Testament, we read this before. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Once again, we see how peace and joy work together. When we are in the kingdom, it's peace and joy that is supposed to lead us. It's peace and joy that's supposed to be uh, grueling and guarding and directing our hearts and right now church I want to encourage you hold on to your peace don't allow the news that is coming in and I tell you majority of the news is negative news I love to hear days when we haven't had a, a new case of coronavirus or a days when when uh, the, the uh, people are, are, are protected or good news or testimonies of good things that are happening but as we know the overwhelming news has been quite negative uh, hold on to the peace. Don't let go. Hold on to your peace. And God is a God of peace. Hebrews 13, 20 to 21 says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work <clears throat> to do His will, working in you what is well-pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom glory, be glory forever. Amen. Once again, he says, A God of peace will make you complete to do His will. Are you seeing this? Peace is the way to do the will of God. Many people walk away from God's will because they lose the peace and the joy. People walk away from marriages because they lose the joy and the peace. People walk away from good jobs because they lose the peace and the joy. People walk away from ministry because they have lost the peace and the joy. So hold on to your peace and joy. Ephesians 6.15 saying, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is part of the armor of God. And I want to explain something. When Paul was writing about the armor, he was probably in a Roman prison and he was looking at Roman soldiers. And as he looked at their armor, and he studied their protective gear and the, and, and the armor that it wore into battle, he saw a similarity between our Christian armor and the armor of the Roman soldier. So he said, you know, put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, and the gospel of peace on the feet. And why is that important? Gospel of peace, remember, once again. Because it was the feet that enabled the Roman soldier to stand against the enemy. Now the Roman soldier's sandals or shoes uh, were leather straps. It had leather straps. It had uh, a shield that came up all the way to, that guarded the shin area. It was kind of a metal shield. And the Roman soldier's uh, sandal had spikes. They had spikes of different lengths. They had the shorter spike for ceremonial uh, dress. And they had a longer spike as they went into battle. And why would they do that? Because as they went into battle, in the, the ancient warfare, 
They would plant their feet. They would plant their feet in the ground. They would take up a stance because the enemy would come charging at them and try to knock them off their feet. And a soldier back then or any day who's knocked off his feet and knocked off balance is a dead soldier. Okay? And, and Paul saw this and he realized that this is like the armor of God. I mean, this is what the spiritual warfare is like. The enemy is going to try and knock you off your feet. And therefore, you need to have peace to keep you planted. When the enemy comes charging at you, you plant yourself, hold on to your peace, and, and, and you win the victory. Because as long as you hold on to your peace, the victory is yours. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. He says, be thankful. Thankful comes from hearts, a uh, heart that is in a place of peace. You know, when, you, when you're thankful to God. Uh, but it says something. It says, let the peace of God rule. Now, uh, another version of, of the Bible, the complete Jewish Bible, puts it this way. It says, and let the shalom which comes from the Messiah be your heart's decision maker. What it's saying is, let the peace be the one that decides your life and decides what's going on. Uh, in your life. Let that be the one that calls the shots in your life. And right now, I want to encourage you at the moment when there's so much negativity and so much darkness around us, hold on to your peace and let the peace of God rule in your heart. So, how do you hold on to your peace? Uh, two very important principles. Number one, trust is the cornerstone for peace. When you stop trusting God, you lose your peace. Simple as that. Um, the, the story where Jesus and his disciples were on a boat in the middle of the lake and a, suddenly the Bible says a storm arose, a large storm of the, the lake of Galilee and, and it can happen, it can happen but this was probably, there was also some supernatural element to this and um, Satan was trying to knock the peace off the disciples as they were following Jesus and, and when this mega storm arose, Jesus was sleeping on the boat. And the disciples were panicking and they were trying to uh, bail the water out as water kept filling the boat. In Luke 8, 22 to 25, it says, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into the boat with his disciples and he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the winds. Uh, and the raging water and they ceased and there was a calm but he said to them where is your faith isn't that interesting he turns to them and says where is your faith where, why aren't you trusting I said we are going over to the other side why are you not trusting this these disciples lost their peace and they began to panic in the middle of the sea Jesus was able to sleep because he had perfect peace and his uh, question to them is, why don't you trust? Because trust is a cornerstone of peace. If I told you we are going over to the other side, guess what? We are going over to the other side. Isaiah 26.3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I hope you see that trust is a cornerstone of peace. If you trust God, always you will have peace. So hold on to that trust and faith in God. So the first thing to be led by God uh, is to trust Him. You have to trust Him. Proverbs 3, 5-6 to says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Once again, it says, trust in Him. And when you trust Him, He will direct your path. So trust is extremely important right now in church. I want to let you know that our God, you are able to trust Him. He is worthy of all your faith and trust. He is worthy of that. There is no other source you can put your trust. Long this is going to be for, you know, there are all kinds of negative stories going on. And I don't want to even talk about those right now. But I want to tell you that there is one person who does know, and that is God. And you can trust in Him, and He will never let you down. Well, how do you build your faith? Well, the cornerstone of trust uh, is the Word of God. 
the word of God is where you base your trust on. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We all know this verse and we, we kind of have quoted it before. Um, when Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee and the, is your faith. Why did he say that? Because as I said before, before they crossed, he said, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. He had given them his word. Let us drown. And that's not, that was not, never God's plan. Jesus' plan for them was that they were going over to the other side. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, as you watch this, for all of you, I'm sorry about that. Uh, usually they do one round, but for some reason he's decided to do two today. Um, but that's okay. Let's hold on to our peace. Because you remember the peace is the cornerstone of joy. If you lose our peace and we get, we get upset with what's happening around us, we lose our joy. And if we lose our joy, guess what happens? We lose our strength. Remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you lose your strength, guess what happens? The enemy knocks you over. Trust. You've got to base your trust on the Word of God. You can't base your trust on the news reports or what other people are saying or what you even heard, you know, someone say this or some word somebody gave you. No, go to the Word of God because that is where it is at. It's His never failing Word and you, and the Bible says the Word of God is inspired by the Spirit of God and you can and use it to teach and rebuke and reproof and all these things. Trust the other side. We are going over to the other side. Acts 27 verse 21 to 25. It says, after, But after a long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you shall have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, all those who will sail with you. Therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Isn't that amazing? Let me I'll give you the background to this. Paul was being taken as a prisoner to Rome. He was on a, on a ship, a Roman ship, and uh, this, they, they docked at a harbor. And he, he realized this, this was a storm season, so he, he warned the captain. He said, let's stay here till the, the storms died down but the captain didn't listen to sound mind he was in a hurry to sail so they took the ship out to sea and a storm hit and the sea was the, the ship was about to be wrecked the people are afraid they were they were thinking of throwing out the prisoners and they were panicking and trying to make a lot of wrong decisions right now and it's at this point Paul stands up and says listen I've already heard God and God has said that all of you are going to survive none of you are going to be lost and I believe that. He says, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. So this is the time, church, that I want to encourage you. Spend this time waiting on God and hearing from God. A lot of us have enough time right now. You know, we have time. We are not going to work. We are staying at home with our families. Get your families together. Come get get together or if you're if you don't have your family with you even on your own Get down on your knees and begin to seek God and seek his word and pray and, and and wait on the Lord and fast and pray and read his word and worship God and Hear the voice of God because I tell you that word from God is what's going to get us through the storms And today I'm here to tell you hold on to your peace because we are coming through this storm We are making it through Moses did not panic when he was between the devil and the deep blue sea, literally. And listen to this, why he didn't panic? Because in verse 15 and 16, the Lord said to Moses, before Moses said to the people, God has said to him, why do you cry to me? He said, why are you, so, why are you panicking, Moses? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground, through the midst of the sea. Moses didn't just think of put, picking his rod and holding it up and hoping something happens. No, he heard God. He trusted God. He held on to the peace and the waters parted. For Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know God. 
A lot of us are being still physically because we can't go out. The, we are locked inside, so we are still physically. But a lot of you are panicking inside. You're not still in your heart. Your hearts are not still. You're panicking. You're agitated. You're getting all worked up because you're, you have to sit at home, uh, you know, with your family and whatever else. And you're, you're getting agitated and you just want to go home. And I've seen a whole lot of videos. I mean, all, all uh, funny things, of course. But there's a bit of truth to that. People are just not used to being alone, uh, being at home. So they're getting agitated. But... Listen to this, be still and know God. This is an opportunity God has given every one of us to know Him. The opportunity is yours, don't lose it. Israel lost its opportunity of knowing the Messiah because they thought they knew what they needed to do. They thought they understood things and, and they rejected God's way of doing things. I want to tell you, be still and know God. And once you hear the voice of God, then you act. Then you do what needs to be done. So stand your ground. There's a, as much as there's a struggle to hear God's voice, it takes discipline to, to hear His voice and do what He wants you to do. So I want to ask you this. Stand your ground. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. I want to tell you that, church. Fight the good fight of faith. Don't let go of your trust in God. Hold on to your peace. Hebrews 4.3 says, For we who have believed do enter the rest. It says it's with trust that we enter rest. It's with trust that we still our souls. The devil is going to try to do everything to press, pressurize and knock that peace off your, uh, off your heart. But put on the gospel of peace. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the gospel of peace. And stand your ground. Ephesians 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Don't let the devil knock the peace off your heart. If you need healing, um, you know, if God has healed you, hold on to that healing. You know, some, some of you get healed, some of us get healed. I know, when, I remember when my back got healed and I was testifying and all that. All of a sudden I get this niggly pain in the back and I begin to have the symptoms slowly coming back and all of a sudden the peace begins to get rocked and I'm beginning to wonder, oh my goodness, am I going to be paralyzed again? Am I going to be on the bed again? Is something going to happen? And Hold on to the peace. And then I have to decide and say, no, I choose to trust God. The God who healed me has, has done a perfect work and I'm, I'm not going to go back into that same situation. You know, right now a lot of people are panicking. Every time, you know, you, you get a, a little bit of a sore throat or you get, you know, your nose begins to kind of get the sniffles. You, you begin to think, oh my goodness, am I infected? Have I got coronavirus? And some of that fear is absolutely unfounded because some of you have not even stepped out of your home. So where are you going to get coronavirus? It's not going to come flying through your roof. But, but you know what? We fear. And maybe the others have had some, you know, gone out of bed or whatever. And you, the moment you get this, you're panicking and you think, oh my goodness, am I going to get, uh, inf am I infected? But I want you to trust God. I want you to hold on to faith. The God who, who is with you to protect you and, and, and shield you is good enough to do that. He's strong enough. He's powerful enough. God is your provider. You know, I, I was sharing this, I think, last uh, yesterday when I was doing the study. There was a lady who testified and she said, you know what, we, we, were, we had the last bits of uh, food, vegetables or whatever, to eat. And God supernaturally provided for us. I want to encourage you. Remember, God is a God who provided for Elijah in the, in the midst of a famine. God can provide for you. Because he loves you as much as he loved Elijah. And some of you are probably thinking, well, Elijah was a prophet. He heard from God and all that. Well, yes. And that's what kept his peace. Because he heard from God. Don't lose your faith. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your peace. We are getting through this. It's only a matter of time. We are coming through. And guess what? If you hold on to your peace and hold on to your faith, you're coming out of this a stronger, stronger Christian. Remember I told you last week and the week before, Jesus is making some tough sheep. As I tell you, 
But you know what? I believe that you are a tough sheep. We Sri Lankans, we have been through a lot. And we have come through. Not by our strength or our wisdom or our resilience. But it, we have come through because of the grace of God. Let me tell you, that same grace is available to us today in abundance. So let's pray. And we're going to have some worship. Uh, not on this live stream, but it's going to be uploaded. So I want you to go and, and, and get into the worship as, as Surin leads us. Uh, get into that worship session and start worshiping God as you um, uh, do that. Because worship is a wonderful way of getting the presence of God and driving out the fear from your heart. And bringing in that peace of God into your life also. Because worship looks at God. Worship uh, magnifies God and not your problems. And the moment you magnify God, the peace of God once again settles in our hearts. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we come before your throne of grace. And we thank you, Lord, that you are there for us, Lord, in these most trying times, Father. Lord, you're closest to us, Lord, in the, in the most difficult times, Father. And we just thank you that we are not alone. We thank you that we don't have to go through any of our challenges alone, Lord. Lord, you are with us. You said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the ends of the age. Father, we thank you that the blood of Jesus is powerful enough to, uh, to, to uh, cleanse us and wash us and also to cover us, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father. Lord, we pray not just for Sri Lanka, not just for us, not just for the church, but we pray for the, the nations, especially, Lord, those nations that are really being affected in a big way, Lord, and and hundreds and hundreds of lives are being lost. And Father, we just come before you and pray and say, Lord, let this cease, this wave of destruction cease, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray that this demonic virus will cease in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that it will start receding and not increasing, Lord. There are predictions that there's going to be a second wave and there's going to be a reinfections. And we nullify those things, Lord, with your word. And we cancel, Lord. Every strategy of hell and every plan of hell we cancel in the name of Jesus. For you said, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We bind this demonic spirit, Lord, and um, of death and destruction and fear and isolation. And Lord, we pray that your church will only get stronger, Lord. We pray you release those who are in hospital of this demonic virus and they'll be able to go back to their homes, Father. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you're a prayer answering, miraculous God, a God that we can trust in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Have an awesome, awesome week ahead. We'll try to meet you in between with the Bible study, uh, which we will inform you on our WhatsApp group. And if you're not on the WhatsApp group, you can check on uh, our Facebook page and we'll have another Bible study maybe at the end of the week uh, for you to come and, and hear the Word of God because the Word of God is important. We're just going to try and get the Word of God out there as much as possible because the way we combat fear, the way we combat the enemy is by faith and faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. God bless you. Uh, amen.